Good afternoon, grade 12s, and welcome to another session of accounting. I'm glad to see you. We've had lots of disruptions in our year with Election Day and Easter and all those lovely school holidays we had, but it really is time to um, get going and to knuckle down and to start working really hard on your accounting. Um, in a way, all these holidays is a bit of an irritation because you need discipline and every day's practice when you do accounting. Uh, so I'm hoping that you're using the next uh, three weeks or so before your exam starts to really get going. Um, remember to use your um, chapters on uh, cash flow statements and um, on companies to do revision for the exams. Work through those examples again. You have all the facilities. Pause the video if you need to or the DVD so that you can really just sit and practice, practice, practice. Today, we are going to talk about inventory. Inventory matches up with another topic which you should be doing later on, um, which is production cost statements. And often you need to understand inventory to do well in production cost statements. But for the you don't have to worry about production cost statements yet. That is only after the June holidays. I want you to focus on inventory today. You started with it last year in grade 11. You would have done a chapter on periodic versus perpetual. And I find with my own learners in my own class that sometimes they battle with this chapter because they have forgotten what they learned in grade 11. So I'm going to quickly run you through that. Our lesson will start with just explaining to you again the difference between the perpetual inventory system and the periodic inventory system. Then we're going to look at, and this is new for grade 12, the FIFO and the weighted average methods of valuating inventory. And then we need to also look at calculating and interpret financial indicators related to inventories. Now, for a business, Maybe first of all, I should explain this word inventory. Inventory is the same as trading stock, and that is a current asset. For the business, it is really important because it's an asset which is a line item in the financial statements, in the balance sheet, and the value of the inventory is important because shareholders will want to look at that and they will want to see changes in it and why it has changed. So it's important that the way in which you value and in which you account for it is approved for by the auditors and by the shareholders. And there you see the man looking at his inventory and he's looking at how to evaluate it. Now, a business will choose between when it's choosing its inventory system, the perpetual and the periodic. This is what you learned last year. Now, I'm just thinking, what does that really mean? You see this man sitting here with his little cash register. That means the inventory system explains on how you use your point of sales. In other words, how do you account for inventory when it is sold, but also how you account for inventory when it is purchased. The perpetual system, if you look at that, a perpetual system will often, and modern technology has changed a lot uh, these days, perpetual system will be a company who can, with every sales transaction, say what it is that, they, that they've sold. And the way that they do it is they have this, these barcodes and they um, have a scanner. You might have seen that. And this is just a, a close-up. And this is at the tools. If you, if you go to any shop, and th this enables the business. In those, in those um, areas there, this, this barcode actually explains a lot of information about the inventory. It says where it was purchased, when it was purchased, what it is. And it enables businesses to keep their stock up to date regularly on a daily basis. Well, the opposite of this would be the periodic. You see this guy selling mangoes. He doesn't have a scanner. He knows how much stock he has because he can count it and he can look at it and he knows at the beginning of the day he's going to start with what he had plus what he purchased minus what, he's, what, what is left over is what he sold. More informal, um, often for a business where the owner runs it and knows exactly what's going on in the business. Another example, I'm thinking of this gift shop here. Uh, it's not to say that they don't have a scanner, but I think they're very informal and I think in the end they just literally count how much stock they've got left and that is, um, they subtract that from what they've purchased to get their 
a cost of sales. Another example would be maybe the serve shop where it's a, a relatively easy type of product to count. So they will decide which stock system to use according to that. Now let's take you to the actual working out of the cost of sales. Again, we have on the left hand side the perpetual system. Remember now where the scanners are, big business, lots of stock. It doesn't always work like that in practice, but it's important that you, you try and uh, make this distinction. And then you have the periodic, the guy with the mangoes. Okay. The perpetual system will have a sales account, which at the end of the financial year is closed off to the trading account. And it will have an actual cost of sales account, which is closed off to the trading account, account at the end of the year. And the difference between those two will give you profit and loss, or the amount that should go to the profit and loss, which is the gross profit. In the periodic, remember last year you would have learned about um, carriage on purchases, you would have learned about the purchases account. They have, again, a sales account, which they close off to the trading account, but then they don't have a cost of sales. They have to calculate cost of sales at the end of the year. So what they do is they say opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases plus custom duties minus closing stock. And that gives them their gross profit, which they close off to the profit and loss account. So you'll see in the perpetual account or in the perpetual system, cost of sales is literally an account which is kept up to date all the time from invoices. In periodic, cost of sales is calculated by saying opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases plus custom duties minus closing stock. Now, a business using the periodic inventory will have an income statement with a note to cost of sales. You see there, there's a note next to number one, and it will actually explain to the shareholders how cost of sales was calculated. It will say, we've used opening stock, it will show what the purchases was, we always talk about net purchases there, We'll say what the carriage was, the custom duties. Custom duties is what you, maybe if you've imported stock, what you've paid at the harbor or wherever to, or at the airport to get a product from overseas to the country that you're trading in, and then they'll minus the closing st stock. So they will disclose that in their financial statements. Do you see, it's not like with perpetual that you've been doing ever since you've started accounting, where you simply have a cost of sales account in the, periodic system you have to you only know what your cost of sales is once you have calculated it and there's this thing you have to know what closing stock is and how do you know what closing stock is if you don't have an account to get that from you have to physically count it okay now it's important to remember both systems will do a stock count at year end both systems whether it is, let's just go back to that slide again, slide 9. Perpetual, periodic. I've shown you what the differences are. Both systems will use, let's just keep it there, or will do a stock count at year end. The perpetual system will do a stock count to calculate trading stock deficit. In other words, they will have accounting records and the accounting records will say we have 50,000 rands worth of stock and then they send people in and those people go and count. They literally stand at the shelves and they say, okay, we have five boxes of this. It's a long period. They normally close. You might have seen this in businesses where they allot a certain areas of product and then they often stay during the night and they count their stock and for audit purposes they have to do it because somebody has to say yes what you say on paper the value of your stock is matches up with what we physically counted and if there's a difference the difference will be called trading stock deficit which is an expense and adjustment which you normally have now periodic cannot do that because 
periodic doesn't know how much stock they've sold because they didn't account for it when they sold it. Remember, there is no cost of sales. Only at year end do they know what they've sold. And in periodic, you still have to count, but there you count because you want to calculate the cost of sales, not because you want to work out a deficit. Okay, so let's go back to this stock valuation that I've been speaking about. Now at year end, they have to count. And they can use one of two methods. They can either use the FIFO method or they can use the weighted average method to value their stock. Okay. Remember, FIFO or weighted average. Can you see that for a business will first decide, okay, do I need something fancy, perpetual? And I just want to clear this out. Sometimes the guys selling the surf shops can also use this fancy method because modern technology had, has made it possible. It's easy. You can get a scanner application on your um, smartphone and you can use that. So lately in, with technology, it has become more possible for people to use this system. But you still have to decide on whether you're going to count your end stock using FIFO, sorry, or whether you're going to use your end stock um, using the weighted average method. FIFO or weighted average. That's what you have to decide. And there is no hard and fast rule that says, okay, stationary shops should use FIFO and vegetable shops should use weighted average. A business has to decide which is going to work best for them and then they have to stick with that. And if they want to change, it would be important for them to disclose that in their financial statements. I remember um, investigating a, a shop once where the owner of the shop said he knows that it will be better for him to start using the perpetual system. But he has very loyal workers and they will never be able to cope with the technology that the perpetual will call for in his specific business. So even though the perpetual will be more accurate, he's going to stay with periodic because it's more important for him to stay loyal to the people who work for him. And I thought that was quite important to know. A business will have to see what works best for them. Okay. Now, I want to explain these two systems, the FIFO or the weighted average, and I'm going to do that using coffee mugs, but not physical, on a PowerPoint. Okay, so let's start with the first in, first out system. Let's imagine you're a business and you buy and sell coffee mugs. Your first batch, you buy 10 mugs. Do you see the 10 mugs? And you paid 10 rand for each mug. So the total cost is 10 mugs times 10 rand, giving me 100 rand. Then, a little later, you buy more stock, 10 mugs again, but the prices have gone up. Why did the prices go up? Because transport costs went up, or maybe the raw materials went up. And now you bought 10 mugs, but you bought it at 15 rand each, so you paid 150 rand for it. In the end, you have 20 mugs, and the total value of the mugs is 250 rand. Okay, so let's take that a little further. What if you now sell 12 mugs according to the FIFO method? Now you have to work out your closing stock. Once you've sold it, you're going to go sell mug number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because first in, first out says the stock that was purchased first will be sold first. And in the end, I'm left with eight mugs, which is from the second batch at 15 rand. So if I want to work out the value of my closing stock, I have to say eight mugs, there they are, 
at 15 rand each that gives me 120 rand that's the value of my closing stock using the first in first out method I want you to open your activity books and turn to number one the Gary's golf ball shop okay uh, now I always say you have to be excellent in reading for accounting I can't stress it enough and my son's math teacher told him and I thought I'll share this with you it's a junior um, son and a junior math teacher said you read three times you think twice and you do once and I think that's a brilliant rule for accounting three times of reading two times of thinking one time of ink and doing let's look at this you are provided with information relating to Gary's golf ball shop for the year ended 28 February 2014 I always keep in account my year end 28 February 2014 the golf balls are imported and are all identical the business uses the periodic stock system okay because it's an identical product it's probably easy to count they can actually weigh the golf balls to count it so that's the information provided to you then they say now always when you get something like this make sure that you understand what he said to you number one we have my golf balls on hand on the at the beginning of the year remember we said the financial year ends in february so it will start in march it then gives you a table with the number of golf balls the cost price of the golf balls the carriage inwards that really is just carriage on purchases in other words the transport cost which is a cost to you which you pay to get the stock at your store where you want to sell it from and the total and it's important to remember that when I talk about the 4,500 rand year which is the total I know that it's the 16 plus the 2 rand which is 18 rand times 250 so they had 250 golf balls which they paid for 16 rand plus 2 rand carriage that's 18 rand giving them a total cost of 4500 rand do you see how carefully I'm reading through my information then the next so these are stock on hand then I have purchases and detail pertaining the purchases and you'll see they give me purchases during the course of the year so 15 March then a little later April then August January of the next year February of the next year so if I say first in first out then obviously those items will be sold first because they were bought first they came in first therefore they will be sold first they give me number of balls they talk about the cost price they say how much it was to transport that it's quite a lot to transport golf balls 4 and 70 per ball yo anyway and then the total amount of the stock and then in the end they say how how many golf balls I had left that's 2450 and they give me a sales figure for the year but they don't give me the number of items sold okay. so I have now carefully analyzed and grade 12s when I first worked through this exercise I made the mistake of not thinking of this carriage even though, though I know I should I somehow assumed I'm not sure what I assumed so I want to point out this mistake and then then I realized halfway into my question I realized wait a minute you forgot completely about the carriage so maybe it's a good thing when you get the test to to just test whether that is actually a total there so I've added the 16 plus the 2 times the 250 to get to 4500 to make 100 percent sure that I have actually included my carriage okay now what they're asking me number one and you'll see on your question but it's also on your answer sheet have a look at this they're saying 
1.1. Calculate the value of closing stock using the FIFO method. Calculate the value of closing stock using the FIFO method. Okay, now remember, I said what is sold first would be pardon, bought first will be sold first. If I know that in the end I have 2,450 items left, then surely those 2,450 items must be 2,000 from this batch and 450 from that batch. So I can actually calculate it from the bottom because remember all of that would have been sold. If I have 2,000 left, it means that whatever is left is left from the last batch. 2,000 from this batch. 450 from that batch, which means 7,000 minus 450. From this batch, they have sold 6,550. You're not going to use that figure, but just to, to explain it to you, the batch that was purchased on the 18th of January, a 7,000 size batch, they've sold 6,550 already and they have 450 left. And I now need to calculate a value of closing stock. Well, it means that I have 2,000, which was purchased, just at the cost price 28 plus the carriage of 4 and 70 and that will give me a value of remember to punch it in on your calculator 65,400 okay plus 450 which was purchased at 21 rand plus 3 rand 90 carriage which is a total of 11,205 so the total of my closing stock or the value of my closing stock is 605 how did I calculate that I said this is what is left and this is what we paid for it. And therefore, I'm literally putting it down at the prices that I paid for it. Based on the assumption that the last stock left was purchased at the last prices. Okay. Now, they're asking me to calculate the cost of sales. And remember, I showed you that note earlier on. Let's just go to that again. In the periodic inventory, when you want to calculate cost of sales and this you have to remember write it down learn it off by heart if you need to periodic inventory works like this we start with opening stock we add to it purchases where returns or allowances has been taken into account already we add to that carriage and customs on purchases we minus from that closing stock to get to cost of sales okay this is important you have to this you have to know opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases minus closing stock and remember with the purchases because activity one does not have that activity one does not have any returns but remember in future exercises if there is a return of stock you need to minus that from the purchases now I'm going to use that to calculate cost of sales let's go I'm going to say opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases minus closing stock will give me cost of sales okay let's find the opening stock let's find the opening stock it says it right there 
2,500 balls. That's the price. That's the total. Information, it says golf balls on hand. So we're going to go opening stock, 4,500 rand. In this specific exercise, you can combine this. Because remember, they have been kind enough with their information to actually give you a total column. So they've got the purchases and the carriage on purchases as a total. So my total purchase is 571,200. And closing stock, I have just calculated there, 76,605. So cost of sales then amount to 499,095 Rand using the FIFO method. So now I have my value of closing stock. Because I, was ca I have my value of closing stock, I could calculate cost of sales. And because I now have cost of sales, I can, that's the next question, calculate gross profit. And gross profit is sales, as you put it in the income statement, minus cost of sales. And in the information, they provide me with a sales figure. They say it was 738720. So I need to say 738720 minus... Cost of sales from this question, 499095, and that is equal to 239,625. And I think you're probably thinking, but what if I get that answer wrong? Then the whole thing is wrong. Remember, your best friend in accounting is this thing called the work with mark and as long as you show your workings the person marking your paper will give you a work with mark because you brought that down to this and let's say this is now also wrong then you'll get a work with mark there but if you're arrogant enough to just write an answer and the answer is wrong then unfortunately you get nothing so remember to show your workings. That is what the space is available for. Keep it neat, keep it tidy so that the person marking your work can easily find the answer. Okay, grade 12. The next thing they do is they say, Cal do all the same calculations again, but this time use the weighted average, me average method. Do the same calculations, but use the weighted average method. So let me explain the weighted average average method to you. Um, I have the same information again. I have the same information again. We have 20 mugs. First batch purchased at 10 Rand. Second batch purchased at 15 Rand. Total cost of the stock is 150 Rand. So if you take all that stock together, purchases of 20 mugs was 100 Rand plus 150 Rand, 250 Rand in total. Now I want to give these mugs. I don't want to work with first in, first out. I'm going to give them a weighted average. This reminds me of when you worked in companies with buying back of shares. Remember, you, still, you also worked out an average to get that price of the shares. It's more or less the same thing. You're going to say, well, if I paid 250 Rand in total for the stock that is available to sell, which represents 20 mugs, then it means the average stock is worth 12 Rand 50 per mug. Maybe you can copy that or calculate, write that down quickly. The weighted average, what you do to calculate it is you take the total value of your stock available, which includes your opening stock, and you divide it by the number of units, and that will give you a weighted average for your stock. 
Okay. Now let's go back to Gary's golf ball shop and this time do the same but for by, but by using the weighted average. Okay. First of all, it says calculate the value of closing stock. But now this time remember I'm using the weighted average. So first of all, I have to calculate a weighted average for my stock. Remember the opening stock was 4,500 Rand from your information. Make sure you find that. The opening stock, let me just show that to you again, was 4,500 Rand. And your purchases, total purchases, 571,200. Okay. 4,500 plus 571,200. And that represented a total of 25 plus 250 golf balls. Okay, make sure you find that information. Remember, 4,500 represented 250 balls. 5721 represented 25,000 balls. Sorry, I just have to, this is a mistake, not 250. Okay, got that? That was a mistake, sorry, can you all read that? That's 250,000. Okay, which means I now have, if I just calculate that or simplify that further, 575,700 five, divided by that total of 25250. And that will give me an average or a weighted average of 22 rand 80 per ball. Therefore, if I counted that I have 2450 balls left and I've given them a weighted average value of 22 rand 80, my closing stock has a value of 55860. Grade 12, using the same transactions and the same information, I get 76605 using the first in, first out method and 55860 using the weighted average method. The question is which one to use. Remember what I said earlier on, a business will choose what works best and then stick to that. And later on, when you're a little more advanced in this chapter, you will realize that what was closing stock at the end of this year becomes opening stock next year. So in the end, it all evens out. But at the moment, it's just important that you get the calculations right. Okay. Next thing, they're asking me to calculate the cost of sales. I'm going to use this again. Opening stock, still 4,500 Rand. Do you agree? Okay, I don't have any questions yet. Looks like it's going well. Uh, everybody's still with me. Then I have my purchases. Same thing. 571,200. That includes my carriage on purchases. Now, closing stock was 55,860 and not 76 like in the, in, in the case of the FIFO. So I'm going to go minus 55860 and that gives me a cost of sales of in the end 519840 then calculating gross profit I'm going to go sales of 738720 minus cost of sales of 519840 and that will give me a gross profit of 218880. Now, you are not um, expected to interpret this in this question, but if you just look at it quickly, if you use the FIFO method, you're going to have a bigger gross profit, which will result in more tax. If you use the weighted average method, you will have a smaller gross profit, but if you wanted to sell your business, the value of your trading stock 
is shown at a lower value than the value of your closing stock there. So maybe in your balance sheet you want to increase this amount. Maybe you want to um, make that look a little more because of liquidity reasons. So in this case, maybe this will be a more positive one for you. But in this case, this is more positive in the, in the, uh, for the purpose of tax. But a business will have to decide what works best and then stick to that. Okay. Now, the next part of the question talks about interpreting the financials. Or, or, or it wants you to do a few calculations. Um, it says you, want to, you need to work out the profit markup percentage that they've um, achieved. And they also ask you to work out the stock turnover ratio and the stock holding period. And those are the three ratios which you, mo in most cases, in the case of inventory, have to be able to calculate. Okay, so when you work on the profit markup percentage achieved, remember that is sales minus cost of sales divided by cost of sales and you multiply that with a hundred over one but you've already got sales minus cost of sales you've worked that out in number 1.1 in the last block so you can go in the case of the FIFO method to calculate the gross profit percentage, 239625 divided by the cost of sales, which you worked out in the block just before that, 499095 times 100 over 1, and that gives me 48%. Just to clarify again, where did I get that information from? I said cost of sales sales minus cost of sales is gross profit divided by my cost of sales and I worked it out as a percentage and I got to a 48% markup using the information for the weighted average method I'm going to say the cost of sales is 218880 divided by 519840 multiply it to get it into a percentage and I calculate that my profit markup percentage using the weighted average method is 42.1 percent okay and then they asked me to calculate the stock turnover ratio and they also asked me to calculate the stock holding period okay now, these are two ratios which my learners always ask me, do I have to learn that off by heart? Yes, if you, you have to learn that off by heart if you don't want to just think logically about it. But alternatively, if you think logically about it, you don't have to learn it off by heart. It, uh, it's asking you, what is the stock turnover rate? Now, how fast does your stock get sold? Turnover, how, how can I, the, remember cost of sales is the figure that will tell me which stock I have turned. Turnover, that's sales, how quickly did my stock sell? Go, uh, turn, go look in the cost of sales account and divide that by the average stock. Average stock says stock at the beginning of the year plus stock at the end of the year divided by two so let's go work that out for the FIFO method okay so calculating the stock turnover rate or how quickly my stock turns I'm going to say cost of sales and I divide it by the average stock and it's not times 100 over 1 that you're going to get at times in your answer so my cost of sales is 400 it's again it's the same that I used in the previous example 499095 
and I divide that by, and now I say half of stock at the beginning of the year, remember that 4,500 plus stock at the end of the year, remember we work that out in the very first question, and that gives me an answer of 12,3 times. So if a year has 12 months, then it means my stock actually is sold faster than a month because the stock turns 12.3 times per year, if you have to interpret it that way. Using the figures of the weighted average, we're going to go again, cost of sales divided by average stock. I'm not writing the formula. You never get a mark for your formula, but it's always good to just clarify it for yourself. Remember, I'm going half of because I want to get an average. So I'm taking two values and adding, adding them together, plus 55,860. Remember, we worked that out in the earlier question. And that's going to give me 17,2 times. Again, what is fascinating is it's the same information and it gives you different values. And again, a business will have to decide what works best. Okay. Now, the stock holding period says, if you had to stop buying stock now, for how long will your stock last until there's nothing left in the storeroom? If you look at this, the stock holding period, that's the other ratio that you have to know. You, take, you want to know how long will the stock last you take the average stock and you divide that by the cost of sales. But this time, you multiply it with 12 or with 365. If the question doesn't say whether you should work it out in months or in days, then you can choose either. But if it specifically says work it out per month, then you take 12. And if it says per day, then, it, then you use 365. Okay. Grade 12, I just see there is someone who is saying that he got 12.25, uh, he or she. Um, yes, that is possible. Remember your rounding and a memo will also be writ always be written so that the rounding is taken into account. So I have rounded mine to 12.3, but if you take more decimals, then you'll get 12.25. Also, there's somebody who got 41.1. Just make sure of your workings. 42.2 is the right answer, but it could, could also be because of rounding. Okay. Now, get, let's get back to the stock holding period. I want to work with average stock. So, I'm going to work with half of what I started off with plus what I had at the end of the year. So opening plus closing divided by 2 to get average because it's two um, values that I'm adding together. And I'm going to work it out per day because it didn't say whether it should be, or in days because it didn't say whether it should be months or days. And I divide that by cost of sales 499095. And it says I have more or less 29,666 or let's say 29,7 days worth of stock. Now remember I said to you the stock sells just a little faster than a, a month at a time. And that's true because these two are actually the, the opposite of each other. If you your stock turns 12.3 times, then you can hold your stock for almost a month. That's what it says. Okay, and then calculating the stock holding period for the weighted average ma method, I'm going to go half of the 4,500 Rand that I started off with plus the 55 that I had at the end of the year, and I divide that by the cost of sales, which is in the case of the um, weighted average method 519840 so it says that I have 21,19 or you can say 21,2 days 
worth of stock in my storeroom. Okay. So if you look on the screen again, important that you know these two ratios in terms of interpreting. And then also, we sort of assume that all uh, students can work out profit percentage, but make sure that you know how to work out gross profit percentage. Okay. The question then carries on, and I thought maybe it's a good idea if I just, for those of you who want to rewind later on, then maybe I should just disclose this on the screen so that you can get back to it. Those are all my workings and how I got to that, so that will maybe help you later on if you just want to make sure that your answers are correct. So I'm, I'm just going to pause on the screen for a while there. The last thing this question says is, it's asking you to do a trading account. And remember, I've spoken about this trading account earlier on. Um, in slide five, let's just go there again. Remember, they said that Gary uses the periodic inventory system. So Gary's going to have to do this whole thing of sales plus, um, and on the debit side, the opening stock purchases, carriage on purchases, and custom duty. So let's do that for him quickly. Let's do a um, trading account. It will look something like this. At year end, that's February the 28th, he will transfer his net sales, which is 738720. And on the debit side, closing it off from the opening stock account, which was transferred from the trading stock, he will say it was 4,500. Remember, we didn't have separate carriage on purchases, so you just find saying purchases, that was a total of 571,200. And then the closing stock And they are asking you to do it using the FIFO method 76605. If you balance this out or close it off, you will get to 815325 on this side, 815325. And that means the amount that is closed off to the profit and loss account which is your gross profit which we've calculated earlier on but this is what it would look like in your ledger is 293625 okay and for those of you who cannot clearly see my handwriting on the screen there maybe it's got a bit of a glare in it just make sure that you've got the correct answer there okay 815 Three to five, or the balancing uh, amount in the balancing block. But the important thing is that this is the amount that you are taking to your profit and loss account. Grade twelve. Um, we have a couple of minutes, and I want to speak to you about the next activity. And I really want to just point out one thing that I thought that was quite an interesting thing to look at and maybe something that you, is important to understand how to work it out. Um, remember, with stock questions, something that will often come in is internal control. What can a business do to improve its internal control? If a business is un realizing that something is stolen, what should they do? Um, think about what you would do if it was your business. You would have division of duty so that your staff cannot steal from you. Or maybe you would install cameras and maybe you will always make sure that your uh, source documents are kept up to date and that they are filed properly. So go look at and go think and look in your textbook at all the creative ideas that are set that you can help or that can help you to control your stock. And in this specific question, in activity two, let me just page you that quickly. If I can find it. There's this man, and he realizes that somebody is stealing from him. Here we go. Activity two. Lots of information. 
It's a uh, Pratia Traders and it's owned by Dion de Villiers and their financial year is again 28 February 2012 um, and the business is situated in Cape Town and there is a lot of information. Then they say here that Dion employs salesperson to control each item of stock. Jack controls and sells the cricket balls and Shaw controls and sells the cricket bats. They're selling cricket bats and cricket balls. And in this business, they're selling two items. And for the cricket balls, they use the weighted average method. And in, for the cricket bats, they use the first in, first out method. So, and they would have their reasons as to why they've chosen these different methods. Then, first of all, it's a, um, a question where it says Dion wants to sell the business and um, what are the decisions that he should make. I think he should look at the um, property market first, make sure that he's not selling a hen that's lying a golden egg because it looks like this business is still profitable. But I want to look at number 2.2. Dion suspects that a number of cricket balls have been shoplifted. That's an easy item to shoplift. Calculate the number of stolen balls that has been shoplifted. Now, if you look at the information of activity 2.2, quite a substantial amount of information. Remember that golden rule, read three times, then think twice and write once. So look at all this information about the Remember, He's now thinking this is cricket balls, cricket bats, cricket balls, cricket bats. This is opening stock and closing stock giving to you in one bit of information. In the previous exercise, opening stock was at the top and closing at the bottom. Now it's completely different, so you have to really read what you're seeing. Opening stock and closing stock. We have the purchases, carriage on purchases. Look at this. They say during the year the business paid 30200 in transport for cricket balls. Um, the price of the cricket bats already include the carriage. Then they give you this, the sales figure and then the financial indicators. Now, if I have to start looking at where it was that the stock was stolen, I'll have to really interpret my information very clearly and think. Okay, if they had 1,200 cricket balls to start off with, and they have 900 left and they purchased 3,400 just think about that quickly if they had let's write that down they started off with 1,200 balls they purchased another 3,400 they have 900 left which means they must have sold 3,700. But if you look at the information, it says that sales amount to 3,500 cricket balls. And that is not equal to the 3,700. So that means 200 balls must have been stolen. Do you see how I, my, my logic there? I said, I just looked at my figures and I said, well, if this is what I had and this is what I purchased and this is what I've got left, then this must be what I've sold. But my figures say I've sold this. So what has happened here? Okay. Then the other question here is, it says, use the relevant, relevant information to calculate the closing stock value of the cricket balls using the weighted average and then using the FIFO method. Okay. So now, using the weighted average method, remember I have to do that thing where I say, what was available, what was the value of stock available? Opening stock plus purchases. And then, important, remember they said, Carriage on purchases was separate, 30,200. All of that divided by the 1,200 that I had plus the 3,400 that I purchased. And that gives me an average of 147 Rand per ball times 900 balls will give me a value of 132,300.
Okay, so I just wanted to point that out to you. That to me was the two areas that you can look at. This, remember to put that carriage of purchases there and then also how to work out whether something was stolen. Please do me a favor and go do the rest of this activity too. It is a lovely activity to just um, confirm what you've done in activity one. And I hope that you can use this information when you get to the production cost statement. And remember to work hard, put in that extra hour every day. The exams are almost here and it's really important that you do your utmost best to do the best at the end of the, fun of the year. Good luck to you and thank you for listening.